Hey guys, what's up? Carl here and 2020 MacBook Air, technically Apple's second refresh of their thinnest laptop that they have to offer. Obviously, we all saw the keynote last week. These are the first devices running Apple Silicon, of course, the new M1 chip. We actually got three device upgrades. Apple is keeping us busy during the holidays. Of course, the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro, and the Mac Mini, all of those in the studio. So if you wanna see them, just be sure to sub to the channel, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out. I will try to leave them all linked in and around this way, but I wanna start off first with the Air because it's the most popular or the best selling laptop that Apple currently makes. It's also their cheapest model, and I like that Apple kept pricing the same. So $9.99 or $11.69 if you're up here in Canada. I have the base model, which I think most people are eyeing. And obviously the big news is the new M1 chip. Apple is moving away from Intel processors. Of course, now everything is built in-house. We'll talk about that in a bit. Let's get into the unboxing, and we'll kind of explore how much better the new MacBook Air is. So their box art remains the same, and I find that a bit surprising. I would have thought Apple wanted to differentiate their Macs from the Intel-based, but you can still see MacBook Air, of course, the standard image. We've just got the standard pull tab. Up slides the box. And you can see, of course, the MacBook Air up top. It still comes in the same three different colorways. So the silver, space gray, as well as gold. I've got this one here in space gray. And inside, designed by California in Apple. You must be new here if you think that is funny. <laughs> we thankfully get a 30 watt charging brick. So unlike the iPhone 12s, that still does come inside of the box. So that's always nice. And of course, a USB-C cable to charge. User manuals, warranty info, and Apple stickers. So you can see the corresponding space gray inside. And technically when we open up this laptop, this should just start, boo, we hear the sound, okay. It's booting up on its own. And quickly as that is setting up, I'm gonna bring my older MacBook Air. So this is the Intel based one side by side and form factor wise, they are pretty much identical. If you've got them stacked side by side or on top of each other, you won't be able to tell the difference. So they still have that same wedge shaped design, just right around that 2.8 pound mark. So the lightest device that you can get, but in the device with the new M1 chip, these are the first ones shipping with Mac OS Big Sur. I just didn't update this on my older MacBook Air. If you guys want a full review, let me know, but we get all of those benefits right out of the box. And I'm honestly really surprised we didn't see an updated display. And we saw that at the end of last year. So we got the update from the 15 inch MacBook Pro to of course the 16 inch. Everyone was expecting the 13 to be bumped up to a 14 inch. We still see fairly large size bezels. And I think that would have made a lot of sense for Apple to introduce their new silicon and to have a better display, more reason to upgrade. But still the same 13 inches retina display. There's an updated front facing camera for FaceTime. And I think a lot of us are getting used to video calls. It's kind of the norm these days. And it overall just feels like a very familiar device, just slightly refreshed, which I think this is. Of course, Big Sur, we've got the new icons. It just looks a bit cleaner. But the big improvements, of course, are coming to the internals, the M1 chip. And Apple is throwing out some pretty crazy numbers. I'd feel very sorry if you have an older MacBook Air or just bought one recently. Return it if you're still within those 30 days because we get up to five times better GPU performance, three and a half times better CPU performance. You'll notice a lot of those big performance performance improvements with Apple's stock apps. So for example, Final Cut Pro. I edited this very video on this device and I can scrub easily through 4K timelines. My older MacBook Air, which I took on one of my last trips to the Philippines to edit some vlog footage, it struggled and it really bogged down. The fan was running all the time. Speaking of fans, this is now a fanless design, so you won't hear any ramp ups. And that's one of the big differences between this and the MacBook Pro. Because they have the same internals, that heat dissipation or the heat management system is one of the only things differentiating models. Obviously having a fan will help dissipate the heat and that's where the MacBook Pro should be better in performance, should help more with prolonged heavy usage. But as I continue to use the MacBook Air, I think this is more viable for video editing. Whereas last year or even earlier in 2020, I couldn't recommend that for the older MacBook Air. And my recommended spec for anyone looking to grab this device is the base model. So $999 or even $899 with education pricing, which I think makes it even more attractive. So that has the eight core CPU, seven core GPU, 256 gig storage, obviously not 
ideal. I would love to see Apple bring these computers with a minimum of 512, but maybe that's on the next bucket list. If you can eke out the extra $200 for 16 gigs of memory, I would definitely recommend you do that, especially if you are looking to edit video on this, of course, anything Photoshop related, anything that taxes the machine a bit more, having that extra RAM will help you out a lot. And I would recommend that over having an increased SSD size. The biggest thing that I've honestly noticed has been the battery life. And I think that's a very welcome improvement. We're getting close to 17 to 18 hours on a single charge. So that's I think six hours more than the older MacBook Air. And, and that's all down to the efficiency now of that Apple Silicon, of course the M1 with Mac OS. We've still got all of the same security benefits. So Touch ID, it has the build of a Mac product. Obviously it's on point. We've got the Magic Keyboard, no more butterfly switches, but that is the same case with the older MacBook Air. Still the same great Touch Force trackpad. Decent speakers, not as good as say the MacBook Pro, but we do have that new three array microphone. So if you are recording music, any of your lectures, any voice recordings for podcasts. Wi-Fi 6, so better connectivity, and we have the two Thunderbolt ports, so that remains the same, but they are USB 4. So if you want, you could theoretically run a Pro Display XDR. On the other side, just the standard headphone jack. Once again, the design is exactly the same, same form factor. And that is kind of the new MacBook Air in a nutshell. And of course, way more in-depth testing. If you want, I'll run some comparisons, some benchmarks against both models. If you did just buy a MacBook Air within the last 30 days, if you honestly could return it, that's probably my recommendation. The benefits of going to Apple Silicon are pretty big. Keep in mind though, a lot of those performance improvements will only be on Apple's stock apps until third-party developers like Adobe, Photoshop. Those will take time to transition to that new hardware. Things might be a bit buggy as they always are, especially we're just moving into Big Sur. So maybe it is wise to wait for the next month or two for kind of kinks to iron out. But that is the new MacBook Air. Hope you guys enjoyed this quick unboxing. Next on deck is the MacBook Pro as well as the Mac Mini. So once again, stay posted, make sure you hit that sub button and I will catch the rest of you in one of those videos. Peace.